All right, well, welcome everybody. Um, thank you for coming out on this rainy Saturday to join us. Um, as you all know, because you're RSVP, you are here for the city's second community equity summit. Um, the first summit we had was just learning about what was going on in our community, and this summit, you've all agreed to help us solve some of these problems. Um, so what we brought you here today is to share what we learned over the fall. We had tremendous participation in our uh, community grant program in the fall. We had 57 people apply to host listening sessions. We thought we were gonna get like 10, um, which means we have so much information from the community about what they value, what they're struggling with, what's important to them. And we are now gonna have the wonderful Nabila Dunbar help you work through um, how to generate some solutions. One of the things that we wanna make sure we do, because we know there's always a gap between what you want the city to be doing and how the city goes about it, or what you want the city to be doing and how to get there. Uh, Nabila is a really well-trained community advocacy trainer, um, and so she's gonna help us really develop solutions that we can hand to council and that they can say, okay, this is workable, right? This is something doable. Um, because as much as we would like to say, give everyone a million dollars and solve the problems, right? We don't get to do that, and if we want them to take our solutions seriously, we need to work on developing solutions that we can start implementing, right? Um, and so I really appreciate all of you coming out and joining us to help us develop that. And I will now pass the mic to your host for the day. Hi, everyone. I don't need a mic, but I would use a mic because the cameraman told me to. So we're gonna get started. And um, before we get started, we're gonna need someone to click on the slides. Of course. Yeah. Hello, Zoom people. I forget that we're also in Zoom. Awesome. So thank you, Lisa, for that. And thank you for coming to be with us on a Saturday um, rainy morning. Thank you. So what we're going to start doing is um, first going to talk a little bit about what you are, what are we doing today? And we'll go over the agenda. And then how I like to start our conversations is to create some type of grounding rules. And then also kind of sort of like, you know, get us comfortable in this space. And to do that, Salini is going to um, walk us through an icebreaker that's going to allow us to really get to know one another and really connect and humanize who we are. I understand that all of us come different from, from different spaces, different backgrounds. We have different values, different beliefs. What we're going to do today is that we're gonna go wide and then we're gonna go deep. What do you mean by that? We're gonna go wide because I'm gonna talk to you about how government works, the various levels of government, and some of you probably are super, super, super well-versed with all this information. So to those that are already super experts, please be patient and be grace, graceful, as I kind of sort of like get folks that may be newly into this world, kind of sort of like activated. So we're gonna go wide, right? You're gonna learn about advocacy, the levels of advocacy, all the fun stuff. And then we're gonna start going deep. We're gonna start going deep because you see all these handouts right here? We're gonna use these to tell the city how you, not me, because I'm not from Santa Monica, but how you, folks from Santa Monica, see the solutions to the issues that a lot of you indicated through months and months and months of serving. So at the end of today, what we're going to give the city is a roadmap of this is what we want you to do, and this is how long you have to do it. I promise you, if you follow us along with this journey, I'm not saying that we're not gonna have hard conversations today, but that we might just get a little bit closer to having a collective understanding of what the Committee of Santa Monica means. So you are going to help us do that. All we are here to do is to help you facilitate that conversation. Sounds good? If you have any questions, please stop me, interrupt me. If you need assistance with anything, if you want me to slow down, if I get too country, whatever, tell me, I'll stop, I'll pause, and then we'll begin. So really quickly, the ground rules, because I like to set the room. I like for us to have intention of how we're showing up, 
We'll do an icebreaker, and then we'll talk about the boring stuff, right? Levels of advocacy, the government, and then we're really gonna get into today's conversation, which is um, how do we get the city to do what we want them to do, right? How do we hold our city um, elected officials accountable? So next slide, please. So really quickly, we want to make sure that we are respecting the dialogue, right? I want to make sure that all of us can try new ideas, understanding that all of us come from different backgrounds, experiences. We all see the world differently, so I just want you to keep that keep that in mind. Let's try to be active listeners. Let's try to listen before we respond. And sometimes it's okay if you just listen and you stay quiet. Let's embrace diversity. Like I said, all of us come from different backgrounds, beliefs, ethnic groups. So I want us to try to respect each other. Not try, I want us to respect each other. Make sure that we try to maintain some type of confidentiality. We may talk about some stuff that are a little bit touchy. And this also goes for our Zoom uh, people. Please try to be mindful of that. And lastly, let's try to engage really mindfully, right? Let's try to think about impact versus how it lands to someone and how we're saying it, right? So we want to make sure that we um, think about that. So Celine, I'm going to um, bring her up so she can kind of sort of like um, walk us through today's um, icebreaker. Thank you so much for that intro. Um, I, my name is Celine uh, Lopez. Uh, I am a facilitator and a community organizer. I work with both Navila and um, Lisa, Jessica. <laughs> and I'm happy to be here and I'm really excited and proud of you guys for showing up today. So what I would like to do is to invite you to a icebreaker activity. This is called a common thread, like Navila said. The point of the activity is to find commonality between us. Um, so I'm going to invite everyone to please stand up. This is an icebreaker activity, so let's go ahead and wiggle our jiggles out. I'm going to ask of groups of 10. So if I can have 10 people over here and 10 people, and it looks like we're pretty much split up just the way we are now. This common thread activity is going to require us to stand in a circle. So if we can please make a circle right over here. And then we'll make one over there. And it looks like we're going to be a little tight. If you need to divide that one up over there, that would be fine. And what we're going to do, folks, is we're going to grab a thread. And in this thread, go ahead and move around. So I'll start the circle here. Come over, move over here on this side. Just find a little open space. So we're going to get in the circle. Everybody, go ahead and um, move around. I'm going to hand you this one, ma'am. And then on this side, I'll hand you this one over here, sir. This is a yarn, a yarn thread. And I'm going to invite you guys to introduce yourselves in a fun way. So what we're going to say is, um, I'm going to introduce myself. And with my name, I'm going to also introduce a common event, some mundane event that happened to me last week. And what your challenge is, is you're gonna find a commonality in my story to connect it to your life. Anything that you can relate to. For example, last week it was my birthday, and this is a true hey, fact. Happy hey. birthday. And I went out and I celebrated, I went dancing, and I had such a wonderful time, because I haven't done that in a while. Did you find anything relevant to your life that you can connect that? Maybe your hobby is dancing. I don't know. Maybe you know someone who had a birthday. Maybe your birthday is going to be next week. Maybe that reminded you of something. Find something relevant for your life. And when you do, we're going to pass you the thread. So I'm going to put this mic down. And then I'm going to start my story in that way. And then I'm going to invite the group over here to my left to please Find a person to start your story. Anything, any event that you find, common, mundane, a, a regular event. An so activity, something that you did yesterday. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, that is Okay, so I think we can get started and um, we'll go from, from there. Okay, great. So really quickly, 
the objectives of today, like I mentioned at the top of the hour, is not only to kind of sort of like begin to create a roadmap for what are the next steps, but we also want to make sure that all of us some, have a little bit of an understanding of what are some of the foundations of advocacy and what does it mean for us to get activated in our community. For those that are experienced with social justice and community organizing, you'll know that the work is hard and often, and often it goes unnoticed, especially when you are a person of color fighting in a system that has oppressed you for generations. So with that, what I want all of us to do together is think about what are some of these strategies that we can use to hold the folks that we elect accountable. So you'll see, well, I know it's a little bit hard to read, but some of the things that I want us to be able to do today is to understand what are the, some of the foundations of advocacy, develop some strategies for us to uh, begin to work collectively, and then empower ourselves. Um, and we do that through really understanding how government works. And lastly, like I said, most of the work today is not gonna be me talking to you, but you guys coming together as a collective unit, as residents of the, of the city, and working together um, to develop a plan. So we'll get started. So first, I'm gonna like briefly talk about the levels of government. Why I think levels of government matters is because, um, the reason why I think like understanding the levels of government is crucial, it's because we, only know what we know. So when we're thinking about civic engagement, we need to understand what level of, of, of government we need to talk to for whatever reason. So there's three levels of government and three branches. So first, at the top, we have the federal government, that's our national government. All the laws that um, are decided there affect the entire uh, nation. Then we have state laws. Those are the laws that legislators in California uh, work for us as a state, and then we have our local laws. Those happen at the county level, at the township level, and at the city level. The work that we're doing today is at the city level. So the power that city officials have, everything that happens, happens at the city level. Now, in order for the city to function, they need money from the state, and they need money for the, from the federal level. Some of the conversations that I know we wanna have require for us to think about how do we get city officials to push state officials to then push federal officials to work on the issues that we care about. So just think about that, right? That there's three levels of government, national, state, and local. Then if we think about the different branches of government, then we have three of those. We first have the legislative, and you can't see it because it's super wide, but I promise it's a nice little drawing. And then we have the executive. So does anyone know what the legislative is? Yes. And at the state level? And at the local level? Yes, and board of supervisors. Executive, again, at the federal level? The president. At the state level? And at the local level? And then we have, lastly, our courts, right? Supreme Court, state, local. So everything is connected. So when we're thinking about holding our elected officials accountable at the local level, we're playing here and we're playing here. The courts, not so much. We can't really go talk to our courts. The courts are supposed to uphold our constitution, right? At the local level, our city charter, at the state level, um, our constitution, and at the national level, the US constitution. Now, I understand that there's some issues within the constitution because let's think about when that was founded, when our country was founded. Most of the folks that, were, that founded this country didn't look like me. It didn't look like a lot of you in the room. So there's a lot of issues within that that we need to fix. But if you are a community organizer and you know what it means to fight, you know that the fight isn't easy, and sometimes we're gonna lose a lot before we can win. So I want you to remember this because when we're thinking about how do we hold elected officials accountable at the local level, I want you to be realistic of what they can do. 
I'm not saying that I want you not to hold them accountable, but I want you to think, okay, what are the confinements and what are the limitations that they have and how much they can do versus how much as a collective unit you can start getting together, organizing to push state and, and, and if necessary, federal officials, if you wanted to think that big. We can go to the next slide. And this is just a little overview, right? Some of you already said it, so we can go a little bit fast. We have at the federal level, we have the Congress, agencies, and departments. The agencies and departments are the people that kind of sort of like spend the money, right? So if you think about our social safety net program, these are the folks in charge. And um, the more money they have, the more problems they have, the more uh, inequities and inequalities in the way that they think about um, program implementation. So it's really important for us to advocate and to really be present when there's hearing and all of that. Advocacy at the, at the federal level focuses on national policies, right? So what's going to affect the entire nation? Regulations, and here's what you're big, thinking about the big, thinking, the big picture things, such as healthcare, immigration, environmental protection, and some of the civil rights. And um, when you're talking about advocating, we're talking about advocating with Congress, and sometimes the president, but quite frankly, it is actually really hard to pass laws at the federal level. So this is like your last resort, and this is actually the hardest because how big the government is and how much bureaucracy there is. Next slide. Then we have our state government. Most of you probably are familiar with that. We have our governor, our state agencies, and departments, right? This is, again, all of our social safety net, all of the programs that we have. Advocacy at the uh, state level is talking about state laws, policies, and budget allocations. Yep, budget allocations. So you, all of you have a legislator, an assembly member, and a senator that sits at the state capitol. That for men. That means that they get to allocate funding for the district. That matters because they have unrestricted funds. So it's money that they get to choose what to do with it. Sometimes it's hard to hold city officials accountable to go to state and say, hey, we need more money for X and Y and Z in our city. That's why you need to bug your state representative if there's issues you see in your community. But what those issues are, it depends on what it is. And I'll explain a little bit more of that. And at the state level, we're trying to lobby or advocate for state legislation we can rally, we can protest, we can advocate for specific, for specific bills or initiatives. So again, anything that happens at the state level is going to affect the entire state. But keep in mind that every senator and every assembly member that serves you has the power to allocate money. It is from their unrestricted allocations of budget cash. Everyone does that. Uh, it depends on what they want to spend the money. Now, the local government, if you live in California, or rather in LA or a county, you're going to see that local government actually is one of the most difficult to, difficult to understand here. The reason why is because a lot of us live in uh, unincorporated cities, in cities that are their own cities within themselves, for example, Santa Monica. You guys have your own mayor, right? You have your own, do you guys have a mayor? You have your own city council, and then your board of supervisors, you're shared with the LA folks, right? It's confusing. At the city, at the local level, we have city councils, count, um, county board of supervisors, and then municipal authorities. Your municipal authorities are the authorities that are going to oversee everything that the department tells them. So for example, if you go to the section A, or not even section A, but any anything that you have to do with the department, your, your municipal, uh, municipality authorities are the folks for you. At the local level, you want to talk to elected officials about issues directly affecting your community. For example, public transportation, education policies, more, more than education policies, how are they spending the money that has been given to them by the state and national level, and then local infrastructure. For example, if you need improvements in a park, if you need um, additional lighting in your street, if there's potholes, so anything that you think affects your everyday, 
that's what you go to city council for, or even um, uh, board of supervisors. And advocating at the local level is attending city council meetings, participating in community forum, forums, and engaging in local activities. But what I'll also say here is that not only can, can advocacy look like you talking to city council members, but also means you becoming a city council member, you getting appointed to a board or a supervisor within the city. Why? Because oftentimes you'll see that city officials, either they forgot where they came, or they never came from the UK. Like I said at the top of the hour, all of us have different beliefs and different values. That means how do we view the world and what, do we, what we believe others deserve or don't deserve, right? Some of us believe that when there's issues, there has to be a collective movement, and some of us believe that every person is responsible for the way they live, the issues that they're um, impacted by. So it's up to you that if you look at your city council or whatever elected official and you do not see yourself represented, you can do two things. You can vote them out, right? Because you got the power. It's your vote. Or if you're fed up with the system, then get involved. Anyone can get involved. Anyone can become a city council. Shoot, everyone can become a president, right? So just keep that in mind. Okay, so now I'm gonna quickly talk about advocacy. But before I begin that, is there any questions, anything that you want clarification on? Anyone has anything to share? There's a hand back there? Yes, yes. ma'am. So I can't, I know it's kind of sort of challenging. So I know that here, in the city of Santa Monica, you guys have like a real TV system, correct? For every, is it is it so like that? Or tell me how it is in Santa Monica, if anyone knows. Please. Thank you. Uh, good question by our former mayor, uh, Judy Abdo. A lot of great mayors. We have a seven member council, nonpartisan, you know, and there's an election every two years. Four are up, and then the next two years, three are up for election. This is an election year, and no, everyone has an equal amount of power, including the mayor. Mm -hmm. The mayor gets to uh, set the agenda with the vice mayor and the city manager, and cut the blue ribbons and does a help set the agenda. But when it comes to voting, it's not like a mayor can veto anything. The same, uh, the same power. And I like it the way it is because we're a city that's not so big. I can take the blue bus. I could be in every council district where we have community groups. And I really appreciate that every council member is there that's concerned about the whole city, not just the district where they live. Well, thank you, but yes, ma'am. I love this crowd. As Jerry said, the city council consists of seven members with an equal vote. And former Mayor Judy Abdo, you can correct me if I say anything wrong. And, <laughs> the council sets so let can make legislation, pass ordinances, Passes the biggest thing they do is to pass the budget because that sets the priorities of where the city resources will be expended. Then the city council appoints a city manager who is the CEO effectively of the corporation, municipal corporation known as the city of Santa Monica. And that he or she then implements the policies set by the city council. If the council believes the city manager is not doing a good job, they can remove the city manager, but it takes a super majority, I believe, of the council, five votes to do that. Um, so pretty much that's it. So again, the city manager implements, runs the day-to-day, -day, hires staff, manages staff. City council does not manage staff, 
they can communicate, get information from staff, but again, they cannot individually tell the city manager or any city staff what to do. So that's a council manager form of government, which most of the smaller cities, which are the majority of cities in the state of California, follow. Okay, so all of you. Yeah. yeah. All of you should be teaching this, not me. Yeah. Um, a question from the chat. What system of election improves inclusion and representative democracy? Is it true that at large elections, like we have in Santa Monica, are rooted in systemic racism? Mm. Just a really light question for a Saturday morning. Anyone? Yeah, please. Public forum. Let's let's listen to the public forum. In Santa Monica, everybody gets to vote for all the city for the city council. <laughs> Not just one. If we had council districts, it would be all, you would only be able to vote for one person every four years. And the way it is now, four people every four years, two uh, three other people every four years. So every two years, you get to vote. Thank you. So hopefully, David, that answered the question. But what I'll say also is that there are a lot of inequalities in the system, not only in the city of Santa Monica, but across the nation, state, and local governments, right? So what I'll say is that there is some balancing and restructuring that needs to happen, but not only in, not only in elections, but also how people have the ability to go out and vote. Um, who is eligible to vote, and also ensuring that everyone has the time off from work to be able to vote. So there's a lot of system inequalities that, yes, disrupt the system of democracy. But I think that the fact that the city of Santa Monica has done this and is doing this may not solve all the issues, but it's the right step, right? I'm gonna tell you something. If you look at your neighbors, the city of LA, that's a hot mess. No, but they, right now, we have a majority of Latino council members. Yes. Okay. Now. Yes. I also just wanted to point out, do the others important there? Pamela Connor, who spoke, was a former mayor and our. Honorable City Manager David White is here today. He was at the last forum. Busy guy, but he's here. And uh, Santa Monica always has these wonderful community groups that hold candidate forums, and the public is invited to come. And there's a lot of education and a lot of stuff that goes into uh, deciding so people can have an opportunity to vote. And that's a good thing, including the legal women voters. Well, thank you for that. Um, so to your point, the fact that there's people presumably of color in city council, sure, it's a good step, but then I'll push you to think more, right? What about black folks? What about other communities that are not represented? I'm not calling anyone out. I just want us to think, what do we think when we think about diversity? What do we think when we think about inclusion? What do we think when we think about racial empowerment? And really thinking about systematically uprooting some of the long, long, long historic oppressions that have happened, right? And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not calling nobody out, but I just want us to be honest because part of having um, change is about having uncomfortable conversations. And like I said, at the beginning of the hour, all of us have opinions, all of us have different views, because all of us come from different uh, uh, places, right? Not only countries, but also religion groups, um, gender, race, sexuality, whatever. So let's keep that in mind. Yes, I'm happy that the city has um, folks of color, but I want the city to do more. And that's okay, right? We, we want the city to get better because what I see here is a beautiful group of diverse individuals. And if I can see city council like this, then I think you guys can be the blueprint, not only for California, but for the nation, right? 
So let's keep that in mind as we continue to think today about how do we hold our city officials accountable. And when I mean city officials, I just don't mean city council. Oh, no, no, no. I mean folks working in the transportation, right? If there's issues within transportation, if there's issues within signage, whatever it is, right? City council are there as public servants, but also our folks that work in our agencies, right? I said that, all of them serve you, right? Taxpayers, voters, so forth and so on. So really quickly about advocacy. So we need more. We need more representation. And they are running. Yes. Okay, see, that's what I'm saying. So if you think that Santa Monica got it bad, I'm not saying that it's not bad, but I'm saying it's like, think about where has the city come from too, right? I want us to think about that. Um, I'm gonna briefly talk about advocacy because a lot of you are here for the real stuff and it seems like all of you are experts, right? So when we're thinking about advocacy, I want you to think about the process. I said process because if you know, you know that processes take a long time. Now, for my folks in this area, please don't think I'm giving you my back, but the cameraman told me to not talk like this. So I have to face them, okay? But I still, I see all of you, so I just want, I, I just want all of you to know that I see you. Oh, okay, I'm gonna give them my back. <laughs> Okay, just the cameraman was like, do not move. Like, okay, got it. Okay, great. So when we're thinking about um, advocacy, I want us to think about that word process. Because if you know about process, you know it's long. And you know that it takes a lot of trial and error, trial and error. But when we're talk, talking about civic engagement and community, de community development, it's talking about advocacy, but also developing and engaging with community. That means maybe talking to the neighbor that you don't like. Why? Because at the end of the day, you guys share the same space. So even if you hate the fact that your neighbor leaves the trash can out every Monday and Sunday and never put the trash can out back into their house, guess what? You're gonna have to work with them because they live in your city. So we're gonna have to be adults about this at times, right? Next slide. So why, why does advocacy matter? Like why are all of you here on a Saturday morning when you can be doing something more fun? Why? Uh, anyone, why? I, Let's I, have someone that hasn't talked. Talk. Why? <laughs> I love you, but I'm gonna call you out. Anyone else? Yes. Well, I, I just, I'm interested in seeing what the community has said are the issues first. Anyone else? I've lived here 12 years mm -hmm. now, and I love living here. Mm -hmm. And I, in the last, at the, at the uh, last election period where I did join one of the, finding out who the people running for, and I was good. Oh, the people, there's good attitude here mm -hmm. in Santa Monica. So it's, I'm, I'm wanting to be more part of San Monica. Mm -hmm. I've lived here for 12 years and got the advantages of living near the beach and mm -hmm. living in this wonderful place. It's a little more wonderful than a lot of places I've lived in before. Where I live. Here, how, can I, how can I be more on the Santa Monica team is how I like mm -hmm. that. And how can I be, help the community be more of a team community is how I like how I'm wanting to find it for myself. Yeah. Okay, one more person. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, hopefully, everyone heard that. So, um, she said that um, it's about having difficult conversations, and it's like I said, right? It's about thinking of when we say, "Well, our city is inclusive." We're inclusive to who? Right? But who who's saying that is inclusive? 
right? Do you speak for your entire group? I always say, right, black people are not a monolith. People of color are not a monolith, so just because you know a black person doesn't mean you know every black person, right? Just because you know a Latino person doesn't mean you know every Latino person. Just because you know a white person doesn't mean you know all white people, right? So to say that, that a group is a monolith, is dangerous, but to also to say that a city is a monolith is dangerous, right? Because a lot of people, if you think, oh, who lives in Santa Monica? They, they may have the pre, uh, precondition or pre, uh, you know, uh, uh, idea of like who lives there. But if they actually go to the city of Santa Monica and they actually see who lives there, they're gonna realize, oh my God, this is actually a diverse, beautiful city, right? With folks from across the nation, the world. So you guys have the power to start changing what you don't like in the city. Okay, so you can actually bypass all of this, bypass all of that, because it's a lot of the stuff that we talked. So this, really quickly, today, the activity that we're about to do in the next uh, five minutes is going to be rooted in grassroots activism and then um, not legislative advocacy, which is about um, loss, and then lastly, one more, and then community organizing. So we're gonna talk about grassroots and community organizing a little bit more, and then we'll get started in today's activity. So when we're thinking about grassroots activism, it starts from the bottom up, right? So if you think about it, a lot of the reasons why a lot of policies or pilots or ideas don't work, it's because when they're implemented at the top to the bottom, right, they thought by a, a, a minority for the majority. So we wanna make sure that all of the uh, solutions that we brought bring to the community are community-based, that are brought by the community for the community. So we just wanna make sure that we think about that. And then when we're thinking about grassroots activism, it means getting in tune and talking to communities that look like you, but also that don't look like you, and finding the common thread. That is why we got you kind of sort of like at the beginning of the hour when we did the icebreaker, you realize that maybe you may not look like the person next to you, but maybe you hold you hold something common, right? Maybe you guys both share the same hobby. So I want us to try to push ourselves because in order to make a change in our community, we need to kind of sort of like a little bit our community. Even folks that don't, they're not that likable at times. And then lastly, community organizing. How many of you here are long-term community organizers? See, that's a problem. All of you are community organizers. All of you are, whether you want to admit it or not. So all of you here are organizing your community. You know why? Because I'm pretty sure that a lot of you are gonna go tell your neighbor about today. Or you may tell your sister who lives five blocks away from you, or your brother. Or, or the lady that you know that you talk to every time you go to the farmer's market. So technically you are organizing your city. So all of you are community organizers. So again, how many community organizers I have in the room? Okay, that's double, thank you. Okay, great, so now you can fast forward all of that. Um, how are we feeling? Are we ready to get some work done? Okay, cool, so. You can go to the next slide. Um, no, yes, there you go. So, what we're gonna do now is that we are gonna break you down into, wait, do you want to? We're gonna give you guys a break to go to the restroom. Then we're gonna come back and then we're gonna explain how we're gonna break down these subjects. But before we put you on, before we take you on a break, I just kinda sort of wanna tell you guys. These are 11 of the issue areas that Lisa, with her team, created for all of you. In here, all of you are gonna get one of these, right? Is what all of you said that needs to be improved in the city. So today, you guys have two big tasks. One is that you are speaking for yourself, but for people that look like you and people that don't look like you. For people that like you and people that don't like you. So, we are gonna create a list of to-do lists for the city. We're gonna give them a roadmap. And we're gonna, we're gonna do that. And I know it's gonna be challenging. So for this next part, we're actually gonna be breaking you into four groups. 
So if you can just kind of sort of like come back into the space so we can give you the instruction and then um, each group is gonna get to go anywhere they want in this space. So if you wanna have a private conversation with your group, you can do that, so. If I can have everyone come back, you can keep eating and there's more food and you can take the food to your breakout room and all the good stuff. And if you need additional explanations on the um, instructions, we're gonna be here to help you along the way. So I feel like everyone can listen. So we're gonna get you started in this activity and I'm gonna pass the mic to Jessica. She'll give us some instructions and then you'll hear from me and then we'll get started. Hi everyone, I'm Jessica. I work in community advocacy with Nabila and we put together some worksheets along with the feedback that was given um, to the officials from the city based on your listening sessions. Um, so we have some worksheets, we have some worksheets that we created that the, um, through all the listening sessions, the data was compiled into some lists and divided up by area of concern. So each group is going to get two of those List and think of it as like an index um, of all of the issues, but then you have another packet with a grid on it, and that is going to be you're going to get three of those. There's three separate issues that your group will be assigned, and within that, we have the issues that have been broken up into sub issues, sub projects, sub focuses. Um, from the index on the grid. And it gives you space to take notes and it has examples of existing programs if they exist and a space for potential programs um, where you can start your brainstorming and start your, your discussions. And then at the end of that grid, as you move across the page, there is a box for priority. You do not have to prioritize all of them, but the goal for each topic area is to pick two priorities your two top priorities, and that is a group sort of vote, discussion, we want everyone to have a consensus. Ultimately, the group will turn in three of these to us at the end of the workshop today, this worksheet, one for each focus area. So community, um, like uh, education, um, general, less, <laughs> general city operations, um, housing, etc. So you'll, for the three groups that you're assigned, you'll each have one for each topic. On this topic, you'll put the two top priorities that you decided as the group, and then three tangible next steps that you would like to see the city take action on, and then deadlines for those tangible steps. So this is like a recipe that you're writing to give to the city that you have a plan that you'd like to see them take action on for these specific topics. I know that was like a little bit hard to follow, but I promise you that it'll make sense once you have the handout. So for example, one of the issue areas, and, and I just got this one as an example and hopefully everyone can see it. So if you're looking at the issue area here, it's operations and inclusivity. So as a group, you're gonna read all of the different issues and then you're gonna pick which are the two top issues. So click next. So for example, for me, if I, my group chose task 1A, which is greater ex uh, representation of the city leadership. What does that mean, right? So the example that I chose, I said that I want to promote the election slash service of people of color to sit in local offices by organizing candidate recruitment or a committee, and this is going to be happening in 2026, right? So out of A1, I chose, I created a tangible next step with a deadline, next step. The second example is if I decided with my group that 1D is what I want to do, 1D in this case is increased cultural awareness and biases of the city. How I plan to do that with my group, we said that we want to roll out a cultural competency and bias awareness training for every person working in the city 
in the next six months, right? So I want us to be specific, right? So like I said, each of you is going to be assigned randomly. So if you're upset that you are not in the space where you need to be, because let's say you're here for um, transportation and I put you in a, in a group that has nothing to do with you, I'm sorry, but I want you to stay there. Right? Because I want you to think critically of all the issues within the city. And you, as a group, are going to come together with two priorities. I know it's going to be hard. That's why I want you to talk to each other. I want us to listen to each other. And each of you is getting a handout so you can make your own notes. But as a team leader, one of you has to give me back three of these. Why three? Because each of you has three different issues. And each worksheet is going to include two next steps with timelines and deadlines. So we're gonna just count you into one, two, three, four. So I want you to just like start saying one, two, three, four, and then we'll start again, one, two, three, four, and that's how we're gonna break it down. So we'll start with you. I think homeless. Okay. Yes, this housing is the same thing you're gonna have here. Just for me, I prefer to get section eight and then coming over the board. How many of you do you think that will be as well? All right, everybody. Um, thank you very much for spending all your time with us this afternoon and this morning and sharing all of your ideas. I really appreciate how engaged everyone is. I can see there's at least two groups that we used to stop generating ideas, and that's fine. I'm gonna just keep talking, and then eventually we'll kick you out. Um, but in the meantime, I just really wanna say I very much appreciate you all coming out and spending your time doing this. Um, I was just with a group online, and I'm gonna tell them, tell you all the same thing I told them. The city is genuinely a better city because you all are willing to do this. Um, it's very hard, right, for the city to grow or to reflect its residents if we don't hear from you. And so it's on us to try to find ways to come and talk to you, right? But it also, it's meaningless if you guys don't come. Um, and so I just greatly want to say how much I appreciate you all coming. Thank you to our wonderful facilitators for running the day for us. And I will be saying every day probably until April 24th, um, please apply to host a community listening session. You can have a $500 grant to host a session. The session will be focused on one of the areas that we discussed today. You choose your own area though, that's up to you. Um, the money is there for you to host a meeting that is inclusive, welcoming, um, that means you can use the money, the money for food. You can use the money for translation. You can use the money for childcare. Um, there was a disability group that met last in the fall. They had a virtual meeting, but they managed to get food to everybody that attended so that it still felt like they were together um, because the accommodations they need made it too hard for them to all be in the same room, but they found a way to connect virtually. Um, I love hearing that. Right? Those creative ways of using these dollars to bring your community together, that's why we're doing this, right? And so the more we hear that, the better. Um, we had 57 applications in the fall. I'd love to see double that. Um, so tell everybody you know, right? When I, my goal is to run out of money. So <laughs> there's not too many applications as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I just, again, really, it really does make our work better. It's higher quality. It's more reflective of the city that we're trying to serve. The more we hear from everybody and the more you all share with us. So thank you very much for sharing this time with us. Feel free to take food on your way out.